Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel, my name is Invin. Today I'm going to be bringing you guys a video on my best great axe and hatchet build which I used in the previous beta. Now bear in mind that some of these changes that are predicted to come up for the great axe may actually be implemented by the time we get to the open beta. So if that is the case then obviously I'll rework this video when that does come out and when we get the patch notes. But if not, then this is going to be fairly similar. And to be honest, it's probably going to work fairly similar mechanically. So the skills are probably going to be quite similar, at least the active ones, even if they change up the passives and stuff. So we may see some damage value changes, that sort of thing. But generally, overall, you're still going to want to use these specific perks or the ones that are going to be similar when the game comes out. Hatchet, as far as we're aware, is going to stay relatively similar as well. So I wanted to bring you guys mainly focused on the hatchet as well, because that's kind of my primary weapon. Now, you may have seen in the title that this is the best new world hatchet and great axe class. I had to get you to click somehow. It's my version of the best class. It's what I've found to be the best through playing it. As I've got about six, seven hundred hours in the game right now, this is my favourite class with these two weapons. So it might not strictly be the best, but please, you know, just bear with me. <laughs> follow the build and see what you guys think. And if you have got any suggestions of what you think is slightly better or anything that you would change yourself, drop them in the comments below because I'm always interested to see people's feedback. Maybe tweak up the build for myself to maybe even make it better for me too. And obviously anybody else that's in the comments too so we can all get the best build possible. So first of all here, we're going to just go over the Great Axe because as I say, there is going to be some changes predicted to come up with this in the full launch. So what I'm going to do is go through what I used in the beta last time, what the good passives are right now, and then not spend too much time dwelling on it just in case we do get a lot of value changes when the game actually gets to open beta and full release. So essentially here, what I went with was Reap. Then I went with Greed, which gives you light attacks with your Great Axe, grant you 5% damage for 5 seconds and a max 3 stacks there, which gives you 15% extra damage with light attacks, which is really, really nice. Now I then went with Charge and the two upgrades to Charge when you can get it. Now Charge is the one where you run forward with your Axe and then you deal 120% weapon damage when you reach the target or press the left mouse button. And then that now Charge now deals 120 to 140 based on how far you've travelled. So if you've travelled a little bit further to that maximum distance, you're going to do a little bit extra damage which is really, really nice. Now here you could either go for Execute if you want to do a powerful smash on the enemy that will then basically do them a lot of damage, particularly if they're under 50% health. Or you can go for Gravity Well. It depends what you're doing. If you're doing small-scale PvP and PvE stuff, Execute could be really good. If you're doing the Expeditions or large-scale PvP in terms of the Wars, then Gravity Well is really good. So I'm going to go down the Gravity Well path here just to show you guys what I go for. So Heavy Attacks with Great Axe pulls cl foes closer to you. Really nice, a big-scale PvP. Then Rollers at Resolve here, which is when hit whilst holding a Great Axe and below 50% health, you gain stamina. It's kind of useful, but not overall the best thing that i found. So for me, I just went with that one then we've got extent enduring pull here which is heavy attacks with the great axe again grit making the attack unstoppable which is always nice because it's a little bit slow with the great axe and then obviously into gravity well which is where you create a vortex that pulls foes to its center for three seconds and when it ends it deals damage burst of 125 percent weapon damage in a range of 10 meters so it's pretty nice and then obviously you can get crowded well which is where the increase burst damage by 10 percent for each foe caught in a vortex and you can even get the third one if you really want to it's kind of up to you what else you want to spec on the other side of the tree but you can also go for this one here which is where allies gain 20 percent fortify when standing in the well again for wars this is really really good now then back onto the Reaper tree, underneath the Reap ability, which is where you extend your axe, pull in foes 5 meters towards you and deal 110% weapon damage. I then go for Reap, so it's got 8 meters, the upgrade, then the heal for 30% of the damage done, because that's really nice. And finally, after you do it, you spin doing an attack that deals 115% weapon damage. Really good ability, so I go for that one too. Then I also really like to get this one here, which is called Critical Condition, and this is where Critical Great Axe attacks against foes below 50% health, crit 15% more often, so I go for that one. Then I also like this one down here, which is Feed, which is you heal for 10% of the damage done with Great Axe against foes below 30% health. Again, meaning that when people are low HP, you're going to be able to kill them quicker, and you're going to heal yourself up, so when you get into towards the end of the fight, as particularly in 1v1 or 1v2 fights there. If you're both getting low HP, you can heal back up, take on the next person, or indeed just get yourself into the next situation, whatever that is. Really good utility with the Great Axe there. Then Keen Edge, which is really good because it just critical hit damage is increased by 10%. It's really nice. Obviously, that then unlocks Bloodlust, which is when you've got at least 10 points in there. And that says you move 30% faster and deal 15% more damage when looking at a foe within 15 meters. If you are charging towards people, trying to catch them up in PvP situations, really, really good. Really good for PvE situations in those expeditions as you're able to jot around the enemies a lot quicker with this. And obviously dealing that extra damage as well 
it's a no-brainer. And it's a passive ability, basically, so it's really, really nice. No cooldown on it. It's always active, which makes the Great Axe excellent, which is why we think there's going to be changes to this when the full release and the open beta do come along. Now, I also really like to get this end one here, which upgrades your charge ability. And it's during the charge, you may press the right mouse button to execute a swing that deals 140 to 165% weapon damage based on how far you've traveled. Again, really nice. Just does a little bit of extra damage there. Gets your overall DPS up and also means that when you're repositioning with those attacks, similar to how you can use charge with the fire staff and go through people, you can kind of do that then with the great axe, which is really, really cool and something that not a lot of people have utilized as far as I can tell. So really good ability there. So for the final couple of perks that we have here, as you can see in the top left, we've got two points left available. And this really depends if you're going to be specking this for PvP and for wars or larger scale 5v5, 10v10 groups or even outpost rush groups for PvP with the Great Axe. In which case, you'll probably want two of the perks from the Mauler Tree, which are Crowded Protection, which is while holding a Great Axe, you gain 10% armor when the three or more foes are within four meters. So that's really nice. And then Center of Attention, which is while holding the Great Axe, you gain 10% damage when three or more enemies are within four meters again really really good perks there and really helpful if you're not going to be doing pvp as much i really like to go for frustration or you're going to be doing small scale pvp i should say because this is after one of your attacks is blocked you gain 15 percent damage for 10 seconds so that's really nice in those smaller scale pvp situations and you can also go for critical gains which is when you make a critical hit you heal yourself 10 percent of the damage done regardless of what health the enemy is at another one is two consecutive light attacks with the great axe grants you haste for three seconds so again if you're to be doing a lot of expeditions this can be really good to be able to quick clear some of those and maximize your xp so for me i would go for that one for pve and the other two for pvp it's entirely up to you what you want to go for but that's generally my build with the great axe so moving on here to the hatchet now the hatchet for me honestly i've just gone full berserker tree pretty much every time i do like to get a point in aimed throw but not right until the end so i'm kind of going to go through this in the order that i would get things so firstly you get berserk for me that's always a really really good one and then i like to get the movement speed increase and the heal as soon as possible because those are really really good abilities and they make this have such a good sustain at only level three which is why the hatchet in my opinion is one of the best weapons for leveling you've then got the ability to take on the other actives if you want to so I like to then go for Feral Rush which is where you jump forward and when you do this you hit the enemy twice, first hit deals 100% and second hit deals 115% of your weapon damage so I like to grab that and then for me again I grab Raging Torrent which is performing 4 fast light attacks that deal 80% weapon damage each really really good ability now then you want to look at your passive so if the target is below 30% health, light and heavy attacks deal 20% more damage this is just generally good all round and it's going to help you to finish kills a lot quicker whether it's PvE or PvP. So I like to take this one as kind of like my 6th or 7th perk there just because it's very, very nice to have. I then like to upgrade my abilities. So Feral Rush here, you can see that you've got if the target is below 30% health, Feral Rush deals 20% more damage. So that's really nice. Then go back to the middle for the berserk tree here and then you can put on berserk in purge which is when you're triggering berserk removes all crowd control effects stuns slows roots etc from the player ridiculously good ability and then you can also pair this with the final upgrade to berserk here which is while in berserk your attacks are uninterruptible during this mode and you cannot be staggered so if you're pairing this you activate berserk and then do the other two abilities when you've got this passive unlocked it's crazy good. You can't be interrupted for them. You do a lot of damage and you can catch people up like, tremendously whilst not getting stun locked by things like the Warhammer, which is really, really good. Now, at this point, you've got 10 skill points in this tree. So what I like to get is Defy Death. Now, some people don't like this one particularly, but I think it's really, really good. It avoids death, reducing you to 50 HP and gaining immortality for three seconds on a 75 second cooldown. Now, PvP, granted, it isn't the best thing ever, although you can do some escapes, particularly if you're running. You then pop a potion and pop some food and continue to run while you've got berserk active too it's pretty decent but generally in pve this is one of the better ones you've got because in dungeons somebody else can grab aggro if you accidentally grab it as a dps and then you can heal up or get healed by your healer a lot more often and it stops you going out particularly in boss fights it's going to be integral when you get to those end game boss fights or even early on if you're under geared because it's going to help you to be able to get a lot more sustain than what you would have had without it and that goes kind of across the board to be honest in pvp and pve so personally i really like this some people prefer the one on the other side which is persistent hindrance which is where so Successful throwing axes hit extend all hatchet debuffs by two seconds but for me because i don't spec into this tree too much i personally prefer these ones so that's just where i am at with that i would then finish up here on the feral rush side of things where i'd go for crippling strikes and this one is if feral rush hits a target in the back it then roots them immobilizing the target for two seconds really really good for pvp 
you can catch people up, you can chase them down, and you can stun lock them for a couple of seconds for your teammates to help you out with as well. Also, then I like to max out the Raging Torrent one, so I get Aggressive Approach, which is where hitting a target with Raging Torrent increases Grant's Haste, increasing movement speed by 20% for 6 seconds. It's a big extension, and actually this isn't right on the tree, but it is connected here. And it's Final Blow, which is by pressing a Light Attack at the end of Raging Torrent to deal a final attack dealing 115 weapon damage, essentially meaning you get a 5-hit combo with Haste at the end of it. You can then chase them down with this, or you can chase them down first with this, and then pop that, and you're going to get so much damage, it is ridiculous. So I like to take those there. Yeah. Now, something else that's really good as well is Frenzied Purge here, which is when hitting an enemy below 30% health, remove all bleed, burn, poison effects from the player on a 60 second cooldown. Really helpful for PvE and PvP. I just personally really like having it on there as a utility passive. Now, another one that's really integral, I think, for this build, is particularly when you're going to be a light armor DPS or maybe medium or heavy armor, whatever the case may be, but you're generally going to be quite quick with the hatchet and the great axe. So being able to have maneuverability is key. And so after successful three light attacks, Attacks against the same target, gaining power, granting 30% damage for the next 3 seconds or until the next attack. That's really good because you're going to be able to go and do 3 quick light attacks, do a 4th one with extra power and then you're going to be able to dip or continue to attack them if you've got them low. And it's a really good power spike early on if you get this passive earlier than what I've done here. It can be really, really nice so I'd definitely recommend that one. Also, I really like Desperate Refresh which is where all cooldowns are reduced by 5% when hitting an enemy with an attack while your HP is below 30% because sometimes that can refresh Berserk for you. You can pop that heal up, be able to move around a lot more, get rid of debuffs, all that good stuff, and do a lot more damage, which just makes it ridiculously good. Now as well, if you're going to go for accumulated power, it's always really good to go for fortifying strikes when it's hitting the same target with three light attacks grants. Fortify, increasing damage absorption by 15% for three seconds. Really, really good in expeditions. You can absolutely tear through enemies with this and it gives your healer a much easier job, so it's always a good one. And in PvP, particularly small scale, but even larger scale war PvP, if you're going to use the hatchet, it can be really, really good at making sure that you get less damage overall, which is always a nice thing. Now again, if you are going to be using this in PvP, situations or expeditions, particularly large scale PvP like the wars, against all odds is really good because it increases base damage by 10% for every enemy player within 5 meters, and obviously in wars this can be ridiculously good, so I always pick that one out, I really like it, and again for expeditions where you've got several 3-4 enemies on, that's 30 or 40% extra damage just for being in the expedition area, so it's really good to have on. And then finally I like to go for aimed throw, which is where it replaces the block with an aimed throw that deals 90% weapon damage, holding right mouse button to enter the aimed stance, a throw consumes 30 stamina. So it just gives you a little bit of a ranged option, particularly when you're pairing the hatchet with the great axe, so you've got a little bit of distance there, you're able to stand back, throw the axes at people, and it does do a ton of damage, and... Not to mention people are really not expecting you to have that range capability. So if someone's running spear and bow, they back up to hit you with the bow and you throw some axes at them. It's going to throw them off and make them run a little bit. So then you can catch up with a great axe, do a lot of damage and lock people down very quickly. So I really like to have that one on. So it's up to you what you want to go with there. But for me personally, I really like that ability. So hopefully this video has helped you guys out in terms of what builds you could do with the hatchet and great axe. Like I said at the beginning there, we may see some changes to the great axe when we get open beta and full release. So we'll do an updated version of this video if that is the case but generally if it's just damage values that have changed the skills are still going to be kind of like the best ones to use the hatchet we're not expecting to see too much change with so it should stay fairly similar which is nice so hopefully this helps you guys for release if you plan to use the hatchet the great axe or both of them together if you have enjoyed today's video please do make sure you leave a like on the video down below as it really helps me out if you are new to the channel please do make sure you drop a subscribe as well with the notification bells on so that you do not miss an upload we're uploading new world content every single day so we'd love to have you here as part of the channel community other than that if you'd like to join the discord community the link for that will be in the description and in the comments of the video down below and if you would like to join the channel membership program and help me out supporting me here on youtube that option is down below as well you can just press the join button and see what options we have available for you and other than that as always thank you very much for watching take care and peace